Hi, I'm Tom. I'm Matty. And I'm Lewis. This is the Wigan Way, Wigan's favourite rugby league podcast. Thank you for joining us again on the Wigan Way. It's uh, the end of round five and we're still 100% win record this year in uh, competitive games. We won't include the friendlies. Uh, but lads, how are we doing? Lewis, how are you doing, mate? Yeah, all good, all good. It's been a good week. How about you? Uh, not too bad. Got to gotta get through with uh, watching Wigan. Winning game after game. It's it's going well. Matty, how are you doing, mate? Never gets boring, does it? No. You know, it's... Um... Well, that game against Salford was 12 months, wasn't it, since the first podcast? Yeah, yeah. As we drove down, I got a notification saying it's uh, your, your one-year anniversary. We did plenty of winning in that year. Mm. Yeah, one-year we... anniversary of the Wigan Way. <laughs> we, didn't even, like, we didn't even have a great start to that year when you think about it. No. Really, we, we went no. through a couple of spells where we, where we struggled. and To consider the start that we've had, and... I don't want to sound funny, but how we traditionally get better as the season goes on. Well, yeah. And the top sides do. The top sides try and peak around the playoffs. I think that's the aim. Mm. The, the fact that we're winning games now and could still potentially get better is a, a good situation to be in. I think there's gears we can go through. Mm. Obviously, we're still missing quite a few big bodies. Do, do you think we've, we've actually hit third or fourth gear yet, really? Yeah. I think we have defensively. We did definitely defensively against yeah. Emrith. Yeah. But going forward, I don't think we've looked particularly smooth or or anything where you go, our attack's on fire. You know that like we have games, especially at the end of last season, where we were putting points on for fun. Mm. I don't think we've really, everything's really clicked yet. I know it's only round five and we've only played four league games, so yeah. I'm, not, I'm not really worried about it. But I think there's still another, another step to go and another... Level that we can pick it up if that, if that makes sense. Well, we're only pick it up for the next league game, aren't we? Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, but if you're another team in the league, you've got to be worried. You've got to you've got to be looking at at Wigan situation the same way that we did it about Saints um, for two three years. That they're getting better, and they've still got another gear to go. I think I think that's the position that we're in, and and we've got to keep trying to strive. For, for that next gear. Yeah, I think the kind of good news is that Saints obviously have had a scrappy game mm. against Salford, um, mm. but they didn't end up getting the win. Mm. Whereas we've had a scrappy game, ironically against Salford as well, mm. Mm. but we've managed to see it through and win, even though we weren't at our best. So that's the good news that like, we haven't found that gear. You're right, yeah, but mm. we're still finding ways to just win games. That's what great teams do. They found a way to get two points even when they're not playing well. Right. We weren't great first half against Castleford, and we ended up winning out by thirty uh, twenty odd points. Penrith, we didn't look great going forward, but defensively, no, we were playing Penrith. We were playing Penrith, probably the greatest side uh, in the world at the moment. Certainly defensively, but defensively, we we were phenomenal. Um, everyone talks about how how well Salford played and that they should have beat us. They only conceded two. Tri- oh, we only conceded two tries. I don't. I don't get that. We only conceded two two points, and and we didn't play well, and still win the game by ten points. I think that's just. Yeah, I'm not sure. In that first half, we could have played any worse than we did, and we went into half time four 0 up. Yeah. So the rhetoric that Salford deserved the win, it's just not true, is it? It was very thingy. I thought it was very. Um, like the- and I get why, because obviously when you watch it on TV, the commentators, the pundits, they need to build it up. They're not going to go, it's a rubbish game, this, when anybody watching it, are they? But they kept saying it was a good game. I thought it was a close game. Mm. I didn't necessarily think it was. It was good in some way, it come down to the end, it was in the last, you know, mm. diameter when Wigan won in that this, respect. But I mean, the actual was... standard, it was very scrappy, a lot of errors, a lot of stop start, because a lot of penalties were being conceded by both teams. But it was bad conditions. The, the bad sto- conditions. The story yeah. of the game yeah, was yeah. good. I don't think particularly the quality of either side was... Yeah, the rugby wasn't necessarily the best thing. You know, We've seen better no. rugby games than that. Um, 
so let's let's talk about it. Obviously, we we win this game twenty two points to twelve. Yeah, um, well, I thought we won it, and and I was pleased that we won it when I was at the ground. But then, when I was reading Twitter and BBC, I was disappointed to hear that we should have lost. Yeah, I went, well, that doesn't really matter. But yeah, I was really disappointed to read that Wigan didn't deserve the win. I I don't know where this thing comes from. We didn't deserve to win. Well, Wigan never deserve anything. No, because. You know, we've ruined a lot of childhoods, let's be honest. Yeah. And Saints will get this as well in a few years. We've ruined a lot of childhoods and there's a lot of bitter people. Mm. That whenever we can get get a win, they don't deserve it. Think about it. We beat Cass because of that red card, yeah. which isn't true. Uh, we beat Penrith because of the ref's decision, which isn't true. We beat London because anyone can beat London. Well, that bit is true, actually. But, you know, we, we, <laughs> we didn't deserve to win this game. You know, if but, you, but we're if, not a title challengers no, because we conceded 20 points to London. No, but no, that's not that's not what I was getting at. But we haven't deserved to win any game apart from London. But we're Wigan, so we should be beating all these teams. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, the online rhetoric is... It's like we're the favourites, but yeah. we don't want us to be. Exactly. It's like they keep going, oh, Wigan's got a very strong squad, they've invested well, it's young, it you could deserve, be a dynasty. You deserve but we to win that game. But you should, but you have to win it because you're the favourites. I, I did really find it interesting. Um, a lot of people from other side of Billing Chill, should we say, pointing out that they were twenty points to nil up at this point last week. That was and one person, and you know that's a parody account. <laughs> I'm convinced that's run by a Warrington supporter. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be a real person. That person is a but Warrington supporter. It 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 is interesting, and the the. The hyper, how critical people are of Wigan and told you this the childhood thing, mm. bitter. Yeah. It's weird though, isn't it? Because Saints, like you just said, maybe it's to come for Saints, but they've mm. been a successful team. I think it's. You know, I, think it's I know not as successful as the history that Wigan's got. I but think it's, in, yeah. I don't know. Everyone seems to, you know, when Saints were going. You know, back to back to back to back and winning World Club Challenge against Penrith. It was absolutely amazing for the game. It was the greatest thing for English rugby. Mm. Sky Sports absolutely loving. Yeah. And we can get a bit of success and it's like, you get, like you say, a lot of bitterness surrounding it. Mm. That'll come for Saints. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. It did a bit for Leeds, didn't it? Yeah, that didn't, didn't yeah. really stick people around. Hate did it? For, yeah, a lot of people hate around. Leeds. I think it's a generational thing. Mm. There'll be a group in five, ten years that everything Saints do will be. The worst. It's us, isn't it? <laughs> it's us, yeah. it? We're the ones going to St. John's. Well, we were the ones that would like hate Leeds, no matter what Leeds were doing. We'd always yeah. want to beat them. Yeah. Even if they were terrible. There's always a thing about being Leeds, wasn't there? Even heading the lane yeah, winning. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so this game was on obviously Thursday. Wigan win 22 points to 12. Uh, yeah. Try scores for Double Salt. Double digit win, comfortable. I know. <laughs> I know. Not even out of second gear. Um, but tries for Salford from Tim Laffey and Sam Stone. Obviously, uh, Snood kicking two goals. Um, we'll talk about his... Disaster class. Well, <laughs> man of the match performance, apparently. And this is why I hate when they pick man of the match before the end of the game. He had three try assists, didn't he? He had a really good game <laughs> until the end. <laughs> three try assists and uh, a poor attempt on Bevan French. Yeah. Uh, but try scores for Wigan... Um, French, Wardle, Miskey and Marshall. Yeah. And pick four players who were gonna score. <laughs> <laughs> pick them four, yeah. But what I do love is is Adam Kieran kicked two from two. Mm. Harry Smith kicked one from two. Why is it as soon as Harry Smith got off, we scored both our tries near the sticks? <laughs> they weren't that easy kicks, but I mean they were much easier than the ones Harry tried. <laughs> Harry Harry's couldn't have got any further to the sideline. <laughs> it's it. It's a joke, honestly. I'd love for someone to do a map of where each kicker takes their attempts from because it feels like Harry Smith takes eighty percent of his kicks from from the touchline. Um, that's that's just the way it feels. Um, but the first half, should we have? A, what, what do you think about your thoughts on that first half of the game? We we went in at four uh, nil from quite a late Liam Marshall try. Mm. What were your thoughts at half time, really? In 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 that. I still thought at half time and it, I mean, it was it could go either way. Mm. I thought, mm. like I said, it was a bit scrappy. Errors and ill discipline was costing. Obviously, I know you said the conditions were playing a part in that as well. But I thought really, kind of for the second half coming out, I thought we have a bit cleanest team, complete iron, not concede. 
you know, I thought actually penalties mm. could dictate the game. It was the kind of squeaky clean side. We'll probably go away with the win. Yeah, I think you're right. I, th- I think I was thinking a similar thing. I, th- I thought at that time we can't really play as bad as that with the ball. I don't want to throw into it. We missed quite a lot of tackles, mm. it felt, in that first half. I was surprised that we kept them to nil in that first half, given how much good ball we gave them, and we missed a few tackles, but mm. they just couldn't execute. And that's why I'm, I'm critical of the thinking that Salford deserved the win. They weren't clinical at all. No, they, no. they should have been far more clinical. They should have scored several tries when they were down on our end. They could, they could have been 12, 12 points up in that first half. And yeah, we score a nice try off a kick. But that's what we're going to do. Mm. We got that. We got that. That's what's all over. Then the second half, obviously, they they did turn it on a bit, and they got a couple of tries off kicks themselves. I'd love to have seen the video ref used for the second try because I'm not convinced he was onside. But no, you, no, you I never know with them ones, do you? Because obviously, the French one was offside uh, in the World Club Challenge, and you, you just never know. They clear a few offsides that look dodgy every week. But he did look like he got there very quick, Ryan. Mm. And he didn't check it. it, it the, inter- the interesting thing for me was that I went down at half-time and when we stood there, Matty, I just had this feeling of, like you said, we couldn't, we couldn't play much worse. We couldn't make as many mistakes. And they, I didn't have the feeling that they had the legs to stick with us. If we played well in the second half, they didn't have the legs to stick oh. with us. And that endurance, that fitness, would eventually kick in. And you did make a good point though about when, when Atkin was on, mm. well, when Atkin was playing nine. Yeah, they sped up a lot, didn't they? They, they sped up, and he, he is normally an impact hooker for them. They put right, so they put Ryan on to full back, mm. Riley to halves, Atkin to nine, and it sped them up a bit. Which thought that's interesting because obviously they were down to just Amir Burra. Yeah. You're only, you're only nine. The, the interesting thing for me is, is they very quick, they, they, pr- they could have only done 10 to 15 minutes with Atkin at, uh, Atkin at Hooker. They brought Bruff, uh, Burra back on and took off uh, Dion Cross, I think, and moved Ethan Ryan to the wing and really back to full back and Atkin to six. And it was just a weird change, just for a 10-minute change. I know they didn't have much options there. And you talk about the squad being uh, depleted and, and the injuries that they've got. It wasn't very thin. It was very thin to start with. It, yeah, was, very, it was very thin to start with. Do you not think they could have started with Ryan at full-back? I know you like you like Ryan. I, I, I like Ethan Ryan. But if, if Breeley's good enough to go in at six for 10 to 15 minutes... Could he not do 80 minutes there? And well, that gives you the option of rotating Atkin. Don't forget, we did it this time last year, didn't we? Where we would bring on... Oh, who would we bring on? Cust would go to nine. French would go to... To full back and field at half, in the halves. Yeah. P- Pierce Paul would play centre. Pierce Paul would play centre and King onto the wing. That's an enormous but, shift and that worked for us until not, Field got injured and we just had to scrap it. But do you not think that that was... It always felt like that change came around the 50-minute mark and played till the end. Impact. I don't think they give this enough time to actually cause a big enough effect. No, I think it was doing well. It was a 10-minute change and then they, changed, change and then then they, they went changed back. It. I think, yeah, I think they probably should have kept it. I think we've seen this with a couple of squads so far, haven't we? Mm. You know, changing spies. Like, sure, I mean, Huddersfield do it quite a bit and they did last season as Hull's well. Done it, yeah. Hull KR have been a big one for it. Mm. Uh, keep changing it, but we'll talk about them a bit later on. But Evel's had a run out at full back this week, which we was rooting for last week. Even Hardy could jump in at full back for Lee for a spell. Yeah, so a couple of teams, I think, maybe. Because it's the early rounds, trying to figure out some maybe different shapes, different styles, and the coach is thinking what suits them. Because it's all right running it in training, but you can see how it works on a pause, 13 on 13. See if yeah. it works so that, that'd be the thing it'd be interesting to see if any of these switches change permanently if you play if you train all week and all your video sessions are Jake Connor's fullback and then all of a sudden Jake Connor's six and somebody else's fullback might be might be something a bit different might be a curveball for 20 minutes yeah 15-20 yeah. minutes I get that but I have no doubt that people were aware especially like when Wigan did it last year if things aren't going right, they might move French to full-back. 
Mm. You're not going to suddenly go, oh my God, what's happened here? Like, they well, must I'm not be, talking they must, about what they must oh, be on what, work. I'll have a video of Costco in the bin because Paul Vaughan's playing fullback. That's not yeah. what I'm <laughs> No, I know. There's, a, there's a, taking it too far. I just, I just think, when you see Ethan Ryan lined up on the bench and you know that it was very public that Amir Burrow had been ill and yeah. they haven't got anyone else and what are they going to do? Who's going to play six for Cust? Well, Atkins named at six, but he's, he's played at nine. You must have something in the back of your head well, saying... This is, this is right before the game, though. You don't know that until right before the game. But an hour before, Matty Pete must be aware and just say, listen... Well, I'm, I'm talking about video sessions through the week. Mm. You don't do them an hour before the game, do you? No. Or an hour and a half, whatever, half past six with the team news. I just think you, you must be aware of it going into into a game that... Mm. Listen, Ethan don't... don't option. They, they've got an option. They might move Ryan to full-back... Because they would have known Cuss wasn't playing. So they might have done some work anyway, saying, well, Brayley might play at six. Mm. The whole game. Yeah. I just don't think they give it enough time to work at. Like I said at the time, I thought they, they sped up a little bit. They're a little bit quicker. And, and, and Burrow, I'll give him credit, got through an awful lot of defensive work. I was looking at the, the stats before, and he got through almost 40 tackles in about 65 minutes, which is which is really good going for a guy who's not the biggest and not the biggest tackler. I just don't think they give this time to to really see the benefit of it, if, if, if that makes sense yeah. to you both. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be something they've done in a couple, for mm-hmm. the next couple of weeks and see how they go with it. Yeah. Second half, we obviously get off to the perfect start. Mm. Going up uh, 10 uh, Miski scores. French to Miski, cut out ball, yeah. Harry Smith kicks it off the touchline. We've seen this before. Yeah. We get we get up to a ten nil lead, and things just start to change. Like they make the switch. A couple of things don't really work for us. We make a couple of handling errors. And you got a couple of fifty fifties as well. Yeah, a couple Some of fifty fifties. Generous calls, especially there's a ball steal one. Mm. It's very generous. Before I forget, what do you think of the uh, the Mago HIA? Well. Do you think do you think Sneed was potentially looking not to get ten minutes? You can't really tell because they don't show a good angle of it on the on the sky. And I'm maybe I'm Tim File Hatton here and I'm, and I don't I know I get on at people for saying that, but if it was the other way around and it was a forward On a back on a back close to the back round the head, yeah. They would have shown that replay five or six times. They did they didn't show it once at the ground. No. He does have a swinging arm, and it does hit him direct in the head, I think. But on the angle, you can't tell, so you can't send him off. I can't remember, has he been charged? No, he's not. Not been charged for him? No, not been charged. Well, they must, they must have seen an angle that we haven't. I, I thought at the ground, it just didn't look right the way that Mago didn't get up. It, it was a weird one for me. From what we've seen this year, he could have easily walked for 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah. From what, what we've seen this year... He could have walked for 10 minutes. Because there was mitigation. It wouldn't have been a red card. No, it was never a red card, I don't think. But yeah, he could have said, look, it's, it's a swing in the arm. It's direct contact to the head. Mitigation is falling. You mm. have a 10 type of thing. Yeah, we've seen that before many times this year. Right. So we were, we were just at the point of 10-0 uh, of up. A few things happen. And suddenly we find ourselves 12 points to 10 down. Yeah. And I think we just... We struggled to really get back a foothold in the game. It was very end-to-end. We were very very easily making our way down the field and, and getting into attacking positions, but not really having any sustained pressure on, on Salford's line. What do, you think, what, what do you think turned it? What do you think got us, got us back in this game? Well, the really? turning point is driving them back for a dropout, wasn't it? Yeah. It's got to be. That was definitely the turning point. And he, he, you know what? The ref didn't give many penalties. So I thought, well, we're not going to get a two here mm. because he's not giving many penalties. But that also worked in our favour when we picked him up and dragged him over because some refs, weak refs, would have given a penalty there mm. even though we did nothing wrong. Yeah, They would have just seen it and gone, that looked too easy, penalty. It was nice to see as well those players to celebrate it. Like, oh, yeah. a try. It, it was, was, a, it was a, try. a massive win for him um, when they did it and it was nice for it to see. And, and, and all Lewis, you mentioned this a lot last year. Especially in that nine, nine, ten game run at the back end of the year, 
we threw a lot of players in touch. Yes. Yeah, we did. Yeah, you're right. Players who shouldn't have been thrown in players touch. They were like 10, 15 metres in field. Oh and we managed to get underneath them, three or four in tackle, and just run them over the sideline. Now, this is where I, 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 really, I really want to question Salford's game management. King Viniawa was pushed back in to the end goal from a, uh, from a kick-off. Yeah. Well, I can kind of messed up the catch on the kick-off, yeah. which is why... Yeah, they didn't even give him a chance. Didn't, well, they didn't really give him a chance, no. No, no, I mean, it, it give Wigan a chance to oh, get right, him back yeah. in the end goal. Yeah, yeah. Why, with five five minutes left, was David Nofaluma taking that first carry? You could tell he was blowing in the entire second half. He's not played for six months. Should have just caught it and thrown himself on floor. He See was it very, all the time? Yeah. He was very, very, very stood up. And I, I want to praise Paddy Mago for this. It was a brilliant shot to almost hit up on him and keep him stood up right. Where he hits him, it could have been very easy for him to just bounce off and fall to the floor. But he actually gets up and under and really holds uh, Nofaluma up. Mm. And it gives the chance for Thompson. Um, I'm trying to think who else was in that tackle. Farrell was in it. No, it was, I think Brad O'Neill was in there. But five, I think. Yeah. Brad O'Neill will be in any tackle ever. But He's an absolute animal. I really do want to give Mago the praise because we give him a lot of praise for his go forward and the metres that he makes mm. and possibly criticise him defensively. We but have he, done that, yeah. But his initial shot just holds Nofaluma up and he, he then can't find ground. I think it's been practised in training that. The yeah. nine, like you said, there, the nine, ten games back, that they've worked on tackle techniques. We're thinking actually, and they've practiced it in the wrestle room or mm. on a field where it's like, right, get underneath them, then three or four come in, and I want you to keep them up a bit like in rugby union. I believe you talk to this because they don't want to find the ground. You want to try and hold them up, so you get underneath them, hold them up, mm. and then drag them and push. And I mm. um, honestly I would not be surprised if it's been a big part of their defensive training, especially for areas like that. Yeah, yeah. in that ten meter line, we held them up once near the line. And we had a bit of a gang tackle. And you said drag him over the line. And somebody near us went, not the trial line, but, you know. And I thought, you know, why don't teams drag them? Dead. Drag them in, yeah. dead in goal. Get a 20-metre restart. Yeah. If, you, even... if you've controlled the tackle, I guess you'd be counted as dragging then, wouldn't you? If you're dragging them towards your own post. But if it was like, like when you drag them back for a dropout, hmm? if you could do it legally, you could get 20-metre restart there quite easily and just... Especially if it was last tackle. I remember mm. there was a spell a lot of teams would carry the player over into the end goal. And then stop. And then, and then yeah. stop so they would get a 10 so metre. So they would get it at the 10 metres. But I'd, Unle- unless on. that's a rule that if you then carry on and take them over the end goal. Maybe the ref has to show hell if, if they're in goal, they have to show yeah. hell. I don't know. I don't know. But even that gives you a benefit of you get just a 10 seconds to set yeah, your you defensive seconds, line. Yeah. They've got to run back, they've got to reset the player. It's just about that initial contact and. I'm not going to talk here something about that no one's aware of, but we saw it with um, the reporter Matthew Shaw, but he showed him in the um, the UFC cage at Wigan when he when he decided to run into Tyler Dupree and uh, Paddy Mago when he got cleaned out. But the amount of wrestling work that that Wigan do, yeah. the top teams do. I remember when when Melbourne were really really successful talking about they employed a, co- a referee to come and referee their. Um, Wrestle sessions and would that be an illegal move in, in, in rugby league? Could you can you hold people in certain positions? Well, it's very important to to practice to wrestle, especially in pre season. Not important to wrestle twenty five. <laughs> just to fight to twenty five blocks back to back because you're like ten minutes to train. <laughs> it's Canterbury, isn't it? No, not relevant. Cameron Seraldo back again. But I just think that gives us. I don't care. I mentioned it last week. It's still the best story in rugby league. It's again, terrible. Isn't it? Is, it terrible? <laughs> yeah. is, that, is that better it's than? Can see your oh, missing no, a game because he fell in a pothole. Fell in a pothole. There was those the Catalan Germans yeah. b- bulls. <laughs> and having to wrestle 25 guys. <laughs> that was all like that. the same part of the season as well, wasn't it? It was oh, just, just a mad moment. Just, Maddest month of rugby league history, that. You just can't write rugby league, can you? Um, but that intensity that we work at to, 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 get the, to get the goal line drop out, which obviously... Does anyone think Mark Steen made the right decision going short, though? No. No. Because no. at that point, I was screaming. So I know you guys were at the mm. game. I couldn't get that. I was watching it on TV. But at that point, obviously, Wardle 
captain and the running score, and I just went, deserve it. <laughs> I went, you deserve it. You deserve to lose. Well, when You're he went... Trying to... Che- I know you've meant to... Provide, trying to cheat the game. It is trying to cheat the game. When, it, when he did it, though, game. I panicked, because we are notoriously dreadful at getting short kickoffs and short dropouts, mm. and especially our captain is usually terrible at them. Mm-hmm. And... We and were bad last year though when we had Liam um, Kai Kai Pierce. Pierce Yeah, but it was it was straight on top of Liam Farrell's head, and I thought that's Nenny McDonald and David Nofalu were going to be jumping against Liam Farrell, and I thought, oh no, we've just wasted that amazing piece of defence. But I can see where some people are coming from, saying he should catch it. It's a good kick. Mm. Let's be honest, he should catch it. He does out jump Farrell, obviously. Nenny McDonald's going to out jump Farrell. He should catch it, but. That's only because it's a perfect kick. How many times out of 100 would he even put the perfect dropout in? Those short dropouts are hard. Well, I, d- I do think the amount of good short dropouts is increasing and short kicks because there's a, a tendency to do them more. It's difficult to get that skill right, the, though. The thing I don't understand is... Why do you do it two points up? Why do you do it two points up? I read a lot of people say, well, Cam Munster did it for Melbourne when they were 8-0 up against Penrith. The point was that there was four minutes left. Or five minutes left. Penrith needed two tries because they were eight ahead. So if it went wrong, you were still backing your defence. Oh, I don't think Cam Munster should have done that. I, go, I go don't. Go and back your defence. What's I, wrong with that? I that, don't. If you're winning. But you've also got to remember with Melbourne, they are very, very good with that, with uh, Xavier Coates and Will Warbrook as the two wingers. And there's also the two-point drop goal thing that's kind of in the way. I don't know. But... At least they had a buffer, Melbourne. Salford didn't have a buffer. If well, that went Salford wrong... did two things wrong in the fact of one, they went short, and two, in that predicament, you only your winger or your centre would go and catch the ball. Mm. The other one would stay back. So yeah. then, if we can get it, there's someone there to make a recovery tackle. Oh, you can both McDonald and Nofaluma were. Oh yeah, knock it, try and knock it back to them. So one of them why... should have stayed five, ten metres back. But why would Instead, you not ask your other winger to come across? You know what you're doing. Or Brealey. No, well, Sneed was but, furious. But Brealey, Brealey. Now, obviously, that was Nofa Luma, who's, who's only played... This is his first game in six months, and obviously that partnership's still growing. Then. And let's be honest, that's going to be an amazing partnership, it's Nofa not, Luma. And, yeah, but it's, it's, and it's not about partnerships. Lewis is right. That, that someone should have just Someone should have stayed and someone Sneed goes. was furious, because he kicked out. He said it was a perfect kick, he thought, and he thought, right, if we're going to get it back, or even if we can get it, you know... We, we, we should be covered. It's a it's a perfect kick, and then it turns out that obviously it goes out. It does. The danger, I suppose, and I haven't even thought about this until just now. But the danger is those short dropouts don't go ten. You got two points under the sticks. No, it's um, it's now play the ball. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh. So it's play so the that ball. That encourages under the, the short kick off then. Yeah. The so dropout. there's been a big thing about it encouraging oh, the short okay. kick off. Okay. But even then, we're gonna have got six tackles. 10 metres out. Well, they should have had six tackles 10 metres out anyway because they should yeah. have got Wardle when he caught it. Yeah. But if someone was back. That, but that's what yeah. I mean. So, if we can get it back, the only risk is conceding. If it doesn't go 10, you get the same outcome as, as if we can catch it. Mm. I just don't get why. I don't get why. No, it's cheating Na- Nail it flat and try and get it to go out. Well, that's do, do something. I, I think just send it as long as you can. You've got five minutes left, you two points in. Send it long, back your defence, tackle for six tackles like your life depends on it. Mm. That wasn't it. And then, if you're not prepared to do that, then you're not, you don't deserve to win. And the then game, offside of the kickoff. Opinion. I mean, then, let's be honest, when the when Jake Warden scored, we went a bit crazy. <laughs> it was a good. I, I, he, he was mid air, off the ground, completely off the ground. I had all of them. Yeah, I don't remember who, who held me up. There was both of us. Because I, mean, I thought you were both on top of me, so I don't, I don't even remember. I don't know why either if that happened. But and all three of us were somehow holding each other up. It, it, I think it the fact, the way that we've won games previously and, and, and we've been the dominant side, to to win a game when you've been poor and we're behind... That's a last-minute winner, come on. And a last-minute winner... It was such a different feeling than what it had been. It, and that, we'd been getting some stick from Salford fans too, haven't we? Over in that corner. Yes. Yeah. Um, we had got a lot of stick. We got a lot of stick. I don't stick. know what I did wrong to, to get that stick, but... No, we all got a bit. Um, Even some kids got some stick, which I didn't think was right. Yeah. <laughs> there was this grown man, he was an enormous beard on, screaming in some kids' faces when Sam Stone scored. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just, I don't, I don't get that. And then these kids at the end... Wagon, wagon. Yeah. Go on, man. 
Fair play, give it to him. Fair play, give it back. Um, and he did shake hands with him after the game. Yeah. But, last thing then, obviously, <laughs> is, again, I get now why they have to go for the short kick-off. You can't be offside from a kick-off. You can't, you can't do that. <laughs> that is so sad as well. It was that far offside. Yeah, but the, the, the thing is, when you kick it long... No one bothers. No one bothers about that. Yeah. But if you're going to go short and you're going to try and catch it, you can't be that far offside. Kendall's reaction, honestly, go back and watch this. Because <laughs> his reaction, he just blows his whistle, does the offside signal, and I think he just looks at Cena and just goes... <laughs> like, he just puts his head, he doesn't even have to give the call, he just looks at... I think it's Steve kicking off and just goes... What can he do? What, what John Mitt do? He goes, he's about 10 metres offside. It's poor, isn't it? Poor skill. Yeah. But we, we, we were all laughing. I was really interested that we didn't kick the touch 50 metres out. I thought we would have kicked the touch, but we take the tap. Minimise the risk. We worked, we worked downfield, and Bevan French, I think I think Rowley's words were, he can provide brilliance. He can provide moments of absolute uh, brilliance where he is the man of steel and he, he does things that other can't, others can't. But how long are people going to keep buying that dummy? It's just, people just keep buying it. I don't know. It, I, I don't know if this was such a big, I don't know if this was the dummy that, that got him over here. I, I think, think he was in anyway. I think, yeah, he was in anyway. I think it's last minute of a game that's been played in hard conditions, so there's going to be mm. tiredness. Mm. Much harder playing in those conditions. It t- makes a tight, a fatigue sets in, mental lapse in concentration. Have you reminded me though, do you know, I think the only man to ever buy the Bevan French big dummy twice in one game. Tyler Dupree. Oh, man. Yeah. Last year. <laughs> it was bad, that. You got him twice, I was watching yeah. that highlights the other day. Dupree was absolutely shattered, I think. Mm. Um, but we win the game. We do. 22 points to 10. That obviously took us top of Super League. Um, every team playing four games at that point, because we obviously were the first game. Oh. Salford who played five. Um, yeah. A superior points difference. Um, things looking looking really good. Uh, any complaints, really? No, like I said, good teams find a way to win even when they're not playing the best. So, yeah, we. I think Pete spoke after the game as well. He come out mm. and you know they were trying to again like they do, and I get why the media, and the journalists, and people and they were. That's your team went well tonight. It was just about getting the win. He said, "Look, you know, you're not going to play well every week. It's a long season." Especially with cup games and world club challenges thrown in there as well. You're not going to play your best. We've rested some people who've come back in. It might take them a bit of time to get up to speed. And we go again next week before Good Friday. Well, so, before further comments, I think. Well, just before we, we wrap up on that um, um, section, section, there was just a comment that I, someone had made to me and I passed on to you, Matty, at the game that this was the, the game after the game after the World Cup Challenge. We can't really consider London. It would... London yeah, Report. I know what you mean, yeah. Most teams usually back up after a big event, a Challenge Cup final or whatever, and the talk is, don't lose. Don't lose the week after winning a final. Mm. Yeah? Mm. Saints, when they won the World Club Challenge, came back and beat Castleford. Yeah. We went and beat Huddersfield. We beat Castleford after we won the Challenge Cup and... You don't want to lose the week after winning a final. But it's usually the the second game after that the tiredness really hits you. You can run on adrenaline for so long, but usually it runs out. Mm. And I, I was looking at it in terms of how the league had gone and how we'd done compared to others. And I looked at St. Helens and I thought I'd have a look at the post-World uh, post Club Challenge run. They obviously beat Penrith in Australia and came back and beat Castleford away from home eight days later. Mm. They then lost to Leeds in Golden Point and lost to Lee 20 points to eight the two following weeks before beating Hull FC. Yeah. Our three games post the World Cup Challenge, and I know we haven't had the travel, so it's a little bit of an unfair comparison. We might not have played particularly well, but we've managed to get out of that three good results and we've managed to rest players in doing so and we've managed to rest players we've picked up a couple of injuries but we've also now got Liam Byrne back mm. um, we've rested Cade Ellis who had 80 minutes off <clears throat> I think Cruz Lehman could be back next week Cruz Lehman could potentially be back I wouldn't be surprised to see um, Brad O'Neill get a rest obviously he did 80 minutes in this game and it was interesting that 
No, you did 80 minutes? Yeah, Tom Forbert didn't come on. I didn't know. It was interesting for me that... A little bit of me thought maybe they'll throw Forber on here for a little bit of energy at nine. But Brad's his man. Once we scored, he, he wasn't going to bring him on. No, no. It, it was just in that ten minutes before we scored, maybe does he chuck him on and try and act, get something to happen. But Brad's his man. When, when big moments are on, he wants Brad O'Neill on the pitch, and I think that... That says a lot, considering he's 21. 21 and played 67 games, is it now? 68 he games? he has won literally every single trophy he mm. could possibly win. Can, domestically. Can people put some respect on his name now? For his club. That I'm not interested. I know what you're going to talk about. Sam Tunkins and Jamie Jones picking no, those. Top five. Top five nines. I'm not bothered. I'm not. Keep I'm, Brad O'Neill under the radar. Yeah. And we'll keep him. You know, because he, he is phenomenal. He is a, a a serious serious talent, and I think we can have got a a, a long term, um, Wigan player there who could go on to be a great player for the club, and he's already showing that. Right, any more thoughts on that, lads? No. Right, we'll be back after the break to uh talk about the rest of Super League. Thank you. So, having a look at the rest of Super League this week, we started off on Friday over at Headingley, Leeds vs Saints. Um, Saints winning, 18 points to 8. I think we all back that, even the listeners. But there was a little bit of the Headingley feeling and you could never be so confident back in Leeds. What I want to start with is, do you think Leeds were disappointed to be going in at 8-6? They were really quite... Dominant in that first half, and probably mm. for me, in my opinion, should have had a at least another try going into half time. The fact that they only went in with a two point lead, I think Rowan Smith will be a little bit frustrated on because you can't have that level of dominance so early. Well, I was at I was at cricket practice, so I only got the second half of this game. Mm. But I did hear that um, Leeds had played well but not scored enough tries. L- Leeds attack generally under Rowan Smith. It's not really got a. I don't. Or it doesn't seem like it's got a structure to it. They seem to get tries. Obviously, they've had like obviously Ashley's had a couple of like long range efforts mm-hmm. and like really like eye catching tries. But like how Wigan, I mean, we've just literally been talking about it in the break. Then set to a post and spread it, and you know mm-hmm. you're probably going to get maybe a dummy drop off out the back, out the back, maybe French face ball and Miski goes over. But you also touch. you also know with each one of them steps, there's three different options. Yeah, yeah he can go himself. He can do all whatever. That's what I mean. It's, it's all versions, but they have the lines and there's a system there where they think we're going to get to here and we're going to spread and we know we've got options we can hit. And we'll then play eyes up and play whatever's in front, hit short or go out the back or whatever. Whereas Leeds don't seem like they have that. It seems like everything's off the cuff. They're just all running yeah. around, Crofts, trying Can to Cameron kick in. Smith get an offload? Can Reese yeah. Martin do something? Can you know, Brody Croft, Croft do put something? A kick in? Can, can this. I would really. <clears throat> I would find Leeds really interesting if they picked up a couple of injuries. Can you keep playing that way? When you don't know have the, when you don't have these partnerships, when you don't whatever. I listened to the Matty, uh, the Matty Johns podcast beforehand and he was talking about the best attacking teams. And and Sam Tompkins even mentioned it on Sky, um, that the best attacking teams are predictable, but you can't, you stop, can't it. stop it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Leeds aren't predictable. And no. it's why they can have 40 minutes like where well, they turned Lee over last week or they were really dominant against Saints. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can you do it for 80 minutes? Can you do it 80 it's, minutes? Back to back to back to back. That's it, yeah. that's it. Can you do it game mm. after game? Because you'll have they one can. game where the offload might work and it'll score a try and one where you put a little grubber in and someone dives on the end of it. But in the next game, that grubber kick will go dead and that mm. offload will be a knock-on or it might find an opposite player and you've just yeah. turned the ball over. You know what I mean? You can't do can, that Can you win a comp week. playing that style of rugby? But they've got, they've got an organising half in Frawley. They've got a sort of dynamic one who can kick, but he still can be an organising one in Croft. They've got a forward who can go in at first receiver and give a good ball yeah. to Cam Smith. Cam Smith can do all, anything you want. They've got a dynamite, the dynamite fullback exactly. who can cover cover ground. And they've got strike out wide with a couple of exciting second rows. The, the blueprint is not that dissimilar to what we had last year. Mm-hmm. So, so to what Saints have had and good teams have had, but they don't seem to be trying to find this structure. I, d- I don't know whether that's what the coach wants or whether there's a hidden structure that we, we haven't seen or we as 
fans analysing this game haven't seen yeah. the structure. They might, they, they might be there and they might yeah, be the calls that they're all know. making. But it just doesn't seem it to me. It doesn't seem no, that there's... It seems very just off-the-cuff mm-hmm. ad-lib attack, doesn't it? Just ah, play it and go play a quick play of the ball, offload, run flat and fast, and it's like, but have you got a structure? Have you got, mm-hmm. Are you trying to get to here so you can put this play on them and these lines? Or whatever? It's, it doesn't it, seem to be that with you look at Look at the great Leeds teams and, and who played were... They always had Sinfield, whether he was at 13 or in the halves. They always had Maguire, who, yeah, he had that X factor and could score a try. But he was organised. They had Brent Webb at full back for a long time, who was a calm full back, and he was. He might not have had the flair of a of a whoever, but he was a constant. I think he was a decent player. I, th- I think he was a very good player, but I don't. Player. But what I mean by that is, I don't think he was. He's not got the flair of a lucky Miller, who's who's lightning pace, and they had somebody like Joel Moon. Yeah, he was a real solid centre mm. who could offload. Yeah, he was good hands. You know. Carl Ablett, he is at centre. Yeah, underrated, probably. Yeah. Carl Ablett. Then he had Callum Watkins at centre. He was a very good centre. Yeah, Zach, young, young the, Zach. They had a lot of players who could switch it on and could play, but were also very, very disciplined. And I don't know if Leeds have got the discipline. To put in consistent eighty-minute performances, but they it, should do though because those it, players have, have shown they can do it in the past. I think yeah. it perhaps comes down to the style the coach wants them to play. Mm. Saints, what do we think? They'll be glad to have got the two points here after a tricky. It was a tricky game for them. I said it for a few years, and, and, and they got away with it for a while. I've always had slight concerns about their depth. Not concerns. I should. Not, I'm not saying concerns over Saints again, but. They lost Makinson and then suddenly you end up with um, Blake and Benison as your two wingers. Hurrell and um, Matt Whitley played centre in this game. Yeah. I don't know if they've got... Delaney wasn't meant to be playing, was he? Delaney wasn't meant to be playing and he gets drafted in. I, I, I do rate Delaney and I think he'll be a very, very good player. Yeah. But I just wonder whether... I know they're missing Rickson, but would... No, I don't, they're miss, not missing Rickson, are they? Played in the reserves, didn't he? I don't know if he's just coming back from fitness. Or... I, do, I just don't know. I think he's, he's not as good as Benison, is he? Mm. So maybe he'll play now Makinson's injured. If Makinson doesn't play this week, you know what yeah. I mean? I, ju- I just... Not that I worry, but I don't think they've got the depth. Sorry, I know you're asking us to review this game and I'm jumping ahead here, but I think we're going to learn a lot about Saints on Good Friday. Yeah. In the sense of, all right, I know they lost to Salford, but everyone can have a bit of a bad performance. Like, we're going to even if mm. what we've been challenged, we've shown what we want to do this season, we've shown we, you know, we can do it against Penrith, we've put in you know, a real gritty defensive display. There's a lot of questions being asked about Saints this season, can they back it up? And obviously, got to the semi final last season. Got a tough, game. tough game next as well. Obviously Le- there, Leeds is a tough got, game again. Leeds again. But then they've got us on Good Friday, and I think that'll kind of tell us a lot about this next couple of weeks. It'll tell us a lot about this Saints side and what they're going to be like this season. And they've got Lee coming up as well. Is that the week after us? Oh, well, we'll have a quick check. Because we play Lee as well soon. Who have they? They've obviously played Leeds, they've played London. They've so played Saints, Saints played, they've played, um, Salford. played they've London. Lost to Salford. Played London, played Huddersfield. Beat they, beat, they, they beat Lee, lost to Salford, oh, and, then, Lee. and beat Leeds. They've got to play Leeds. Okay. Then Wigan, then Catalan. Yeah. Oh, so that's that's some tough games then. Yeah, mm. yeah. We're going to learn a lot about this Saints side over yeah. the next couple of weeks, aren't we? It's a good point. Definitely. Um, if they win all them, then you're thinking this is a good team. Yeah. Yeah. But if they drop two of them, especially if one of them's the cup game this week, any questions? Mm. Qu- questions start to be asked. I, do you think questions are being asked now? No, because no, no. just just so. in terms of they've only lost one game. No, I know they've only lost one game. I said to you both, I was very surprised that Benison didn't play a couple of weeks ago. I was very surprised. He's the coach. He sees them more than we do. Mm. I just don't know if they know what their best side is. They'll figure it out. They always do. I think more questions have been asked to say it's, uh during a period last season. Mm. I think the Saints fans were getting a bit uh, frustrated at a lack of points and a lack of attack. Yeah. A lot of like, turning the ball over on the fifth, not chancing, you know, point attacking kicks and things. And I think people were seeing it as a bit of a. Or some of the fans who we know 
we were speaking to were a bit frustrated, but I, I think it's they're not asking questions yet. It's still early days this yeah, season. Learn yeah. a lot about Saints in the next coming weeks. Yeah, good win from them this week. Yeah, they'll be very happy to get away. With. I mean, it's never easy to go to Headingley and win, is no. it? So no, they'll not be pleased all. to have to have done that. Right, shall we move over to Saturday? First of all, in Huddersfield, Hull KR uh, winning twenty four points to twelve. Super League website is accurate as ever as the uh, Hull KR completed at one hundred and eight percent. Um, oh, yeah, well, they beat us up. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never lose a game if you complete 108 percent. So, what does that mean? They completed all their sets, and, and they also completed two of Huddersfield sets. I think them. Huddersfield might have knocked on, and they might have given ball back and said, "Like, no, we want you to complete it." Um, two tries for Huddersfield in Adam Swift and Kevin Naguama. Connor kicking two from the two. Hull KR, the goal kicking issue still. Carrying him around a little bit. Two goals from five attempts from Jez Litton. Mm. Uh, Brian Hall, Jez Litton, Joe Burgess scored and Hiku got two. But it's uh, centre, didn't Played it? at centre. Yeah. I think that was a massive, massive change. Opacek was the one left out. Well, that's that's where I found it really interesting because we talked about this at the end of the last episode. So was it, sorry, Gilly, Hiku, Hall, Hall and Burgess, Burgess yeah, with yeah. the back line. Yeah. With Evels at full back. Yeah. We, we, we talked about we would probably have kept the same side that ended the last game, and that was involving Opacek on the cent- on the wing. I don't think Opacek deserved to be dropped. I thought he'd been very, very good. Yeah. And he's probably the consistent player of that back five. He's the one that provides the 7, 8 out of 10 performances every week. Never really stands out, but never really puts in a poor performance. Well, if you don't want to drop Hiku, then he's the only option, because you have to bring, mm. if you, you have to bring Burgess in, because he's your specialist winger, and he's a good winger. Mm. To bring him in, it's it's the out and out on. winger, isn't it? That's yeah. the thing. Yeah, I've been playing a centre at winger. I mean, what does that say about Burgess if he's the out and out winger that you've signed? Mm. But you'd rather play centre. The Burgess had to come into this game mm. um, to play on the wing, but it was just whether you would drop Hickey or one of well Hickey or Opacek or Gilda, mm. one of the centres. I think he's got a still out though because I was impressed Devils at fullback. Mm. Yeah, I, I thought I, I did a really it. good. I, th- I don't think Iku gets back there. I the, think he's the sticking centre. The only issue they've now got is obviously um, obviously they played the cup this week and Mikey Lewis is out with a HIA. Right. So he won't be available. And Ben Reynolds, who they signed from Featherstone, yeah. won't be available because he's cup tied because the only game he played as captain of Featherstone was in the Challenge Cup. So he's cup tied. So what they're going to have to do is put Evelds into the halves and Hiku... Or Jeslet. Oh, yeah, maybe Jeslet. Jeslet and May play, in, uh, play <laughs> in the halves. Mm. Um, Can Hiku play in the halves? Do we know? Has he ever done that? I don't think he's ever done that. He's before. a centre, isn't he? And he had a very good performance at centre. I thought I was... <laughs> you don't want to change Evelds or Hiku now if they've played well in this position. No, keep Evelds full back. It keep Hiku at centre. Jez Lutton can come in and do a job in there. If, if the rest of your team's the same, you could put one of your young lads in. Yeah. If, if, that, if the rest of your yeah. team stays the same. You, you... Amazing that playing an NRL centre, he has his best performance at centre. Yeah, and a decent Super League fullback. Has a decent performance at fullback. It, it... <laughs> he's good, Evelds, aren't he? I, like I really rate him. Yeah. I think he's really, I think he is a bit underrated. What do we I think, think of he's what... lightning quick? I think he's skillfully can open up a team. Yeah, yeah he's, like he's good, isn't he? What do we think of Huddersfield in this game? I wasn't impressed with them at, at Saints a few weeks ago. No, they I weren't wasn't great impressed against us. against us. We were slow. Obviously, we played the World Cup Challenge, and oh, was, to me, was, was tired. And we, we we still won convincingly, uh, thirty points to sixteen. Their yeah, beat Cass. Their fans are getting frustrated, aren't they? Mm-hmm. They've got to be a lot of booing when they're at the John Smith Stadium. They've got to be. And I know we talked about this and it's probably not fair to talk about it just yet until we talk about the other team mentioning this. But we mentioned Rowan Smith, Ian Watson and Tony Smith about who's in who was in danger and we talked about this in our preview episode. Well, they're all still in danger, but... I think Rowan is the safest of the three. Yeah. Yeah, he is. He's got the most credits in the bank and they've started the best. So yeah. he's definitely the safest. My my issue with Ian Watson and, Rowan, uh, and Tony Smith is what coaches are available if they do get sacked. <laughs> You're probably looking at giving an assistant coach yeah. somewhere a goal, you? you? never know. Unless, unless know, they swap yeah. places and 
take over the other one. You never yeah, know. Yeah, no, they're not, they're not but, you, but you know what I mean. Like, Watson's there is, had time, though, that's the thing as well. He's had a, what is this, his third, money. fourth season. He's had lots of money. Lots of money. Lot, yeah. Third, fourth season, I think, in charge of Huddersfield now. So he's had time, he's had money, he can't be blaming. <laughs> this isn't his squad or, you know, that he's going to take time to build processes and things. It, it's... It's trust it the process. Trust the process is not four years. It's meant no, to be no. eighteen months. Eighteen months, two years, yeah. and then hit the thirties. And everyone talked about. Well, I remember hearing when they brought Matty Pete in that twenty twenty four was 2024. the year that year Wigan were really targeting and picking up the cup and performing so well that we did at the end of last season was almost a bit of a bonus. Yeah. So the fact that 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 came early mm. in a three year. Process. They always say rebuilds are three years at least. Watson must have had. I think Watson must have had longer than four now. Think about think about the team that Pete started with. I often think back to one of my favourite away days. All mm. three of us were on at Wakefield in the cup. J Field hat trick. Mm. Remember that? Mm. There's a lot of players that played that day that don't play for Wigan anymore. Mm. Yeah. Big turnover considering it was two years ago. Um. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I do think that you have to have a high turnover. I imagine Watson's first Huddersfield side looks a lot different to his side that he, he's putting out currently because he's been there a long time. The process has got to be in place. He's got to be performing, and they're not doing for a side that's. He said he joined them because he saw them as a top fourteen. You remember? He did. Yeah, yeah, he did. That's why he it's left. Everything about that club screens top four. And if you if you were. A fan of Salford or a fan of Huddersfield? Well, let's just say, who would you rather have been a fan of over the last few years? They've both achieved yeah. broadly similar things, haven't they? Salford and Huddersfield. Salford? But probably Salford has been a bit more feel-good, hasn't it? Huddersfield's mm. been a bit more Here's disappointing. Here's one that you, that you might look at, and I'm just I'm thinking about what coaches would be available if either of them was to I make the pull. Paul Rowley to move from Salford. Oh, Salford yeah. fans can't get done again with this exact the, same the, thing. They can't. I know, but the, the club is... In a bit, I know, obviously, they had... Um, I can't, who was it on Sky Sports they grabbed? There was some kind of person involved. I can't remember what his actual role was, but on Thursday night, they pulled him in and it was someone from Salford who was on about like the funding with the council and things looking in the right direction now, but Paul Volley has expressed his frustrations at the fact that... Mm. He can't really build anything at Salford mm. because the situation the club's in. Could he go to somewhere like Huddersfield? Uh, well, I don't know, sorry, I don't know about Huddersfield. Hudders- 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 I don't know about Tony Smith, though, Hull FC. Yeah. Bit more stable. Yeah. Hull FC, especially. Big fan base, nice stadium. If he thinks he can, you know, have the play the style of rugby and get the wins that he's getting at Salford at Hull FC, there's definitely a project there for growth and to turn that into a big club and start winning things at Hull FC. Maybe Huddersfield. Maybe don't have the fan base well, FC do, but he's built a, a decent squad and they're bringing jo- uh, Thingy Burgess in. Yeah. So there's definitely potential there. I just... I, I, I struggle to see either one of these really... Really improving. Huddersfield or Hull FC, are we talking? Yeah, I, I can't yeah. see either of them improving. Because I... I I was I was just hoping you didn't mean Hull KR because that's who played Huddersfield in this game. Mm. Hull, Hull KR are, are, are a good side. They, Hull KR are doing mint and probably should, They probably play each other this week, don't they? Huddersfield and Hull FC. They play, they play each other this week. And they got them in, in the cup, haven't they? Ah, yeah, they have. Yeah, I forgot about that. Um, I was looking at the league fixtures. That's why it wasn't there. That'll be very interesting. Mm. It will be interesting. Huddersfield at home against Hull. We'll talk about predictions later if we do predict the cup. But that'll be an interesting test of... Character. Well, whoever loses that is going to be... On a serious, <laughs> serious bother. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Right, shall we move over to that side? I can't believe you didn't tuck your ears in your cap for that bit we were talking about Ian Watson. Oh, I missed that out. I'm going to start doing that, you know. Doesn't suit, suit with my glasses, Ian though. Watson. Don't suit with my glasses. glasses will get in the way. I know, pushing them out as well. Um, shall we move over to Hull? <sighs> Winding it up. Hull FC 4, Hull Leopards 54. Yeah. Wow. Let's Texan. get something out of the way straight away. Good for Lee. They did well. They got the first win on the board mm. with a good performance. 
But they're depleted in And they were squad. struggling with an injured squad. So this is a good win for Lee. Yeah, because we're going to go slagging off LFC for a good while. Yeah. Yeah. Probably out with Sweden. Give Lee some credit. I just wanted to jump in and give Lee no, some credit. No, you're out to do that. They fully deserve it. 100% you're out to do that. Because they, they, they deserve a lot of credit for this performance. You can only beat what's in front of you. And they've beaten them handsomely. Like you said, Lewis, with struggling. I bet the fans would have been a bit concerned. A little bit concerned, yeah. Before this match. I thought Ben McNamara was very impressive. Yeah, he was. The team, they binned him off, didn't they? Yeah. All FC. Um, I think the try that summed it up for me, I think it might have just been after the second half. I can't remember if it was at the end of the first half or at the end of the sec- uh, at the start of the second. But they made a break, Lee, and get tackled about 10, 15 metres out. Matt Moylan gets the ball at first receiver, runs as if he's trying to draw a man to put, I think it was Oliver Holmes over. Mm. And he can't draw a man because none of them come towards him. So he just scored himself. And he just fell over the line. Moylan was pulling the strings, wasn't he? He, ge- he genuinely didn't have a hand put on him. Moylan was pulling the strings, but they did let him. And I know we, I know people say it all the time, but oh, he scored without a hand laid on him. But usually there's a bloke diving at him, trying to like tap him or grab him or do whatever. Mm. He genuinely went over with no one opposing him. They had three on three men in the tackle against Latelli and let him offload for Charlie's try. They just they just shooting themselves in the foot every time. What would you do if you're Tony Smith? <sighs> Sub yourself on. Well, Stanley Jean's on the staff. He, he could actually provide some defensive grit. Grit, yeah. It's just, he, he, I saw, I don't know, you shouldn't look to these, but you know one of those rugby league banter pages or whatever, and they were making fun of Tony Smith because he'd come out and he was trying to, I think he said something about fatigue or he, something. He said something about staying, um, still backing the team and, and backing us long term. Which, to be fair... He has to say. Yeah, because, again, we've talked about on this podcast before when Daryl Pearl felt a bit at Warrington as soon as he called the players out and said... They weren't good enough. It mm. became a very toxic environment, so maybe he's trying to avoid that situation. He's still gonna. He might be going into the sheds and ripping the paint off the walls, giving yeah. the air dry treatment. But yeah. in the press, he's got to say, "Look, no, I, I back this group to get out of it," um, which I, I do get. But yeah, he's under a lot of pressure, isn't he? And the players so, are just certainly not. under pressure. I just, just again, there's certain things I got, and I forgot his name now. Danny Alton. Playing his 400th game of Super League and he, he he goes off with a little bit of an injury. And there's just a photo of him sat against the... He's not even sat with the team. He's sat against the... Sulking. Advertising hall in. And you've got the Kiwi International 9 in New Brown playing halfback. And Thingy Lane, what's his first name? Jordan, Jordan Lane. Jordan Lane playing at 9. And I just... Just things don't add up. I'm just watching these highlights now. Lee must have the most skin fades per player. Oh, it's, definitely. It's super <laughs> <laughs> Is that a factor? Do you get an IMG point for that? I think Lee might get an IMG point for having the most tanning booth as well, looking at some of these. <laughs> outrageous, stickers. outrageous tans. <laughs> um, it's always sunny in Lee. It must be, looking at these players. It's the delight from Dirk Bomb, Lamborghini. <laughs> shines off and gives, gives him a tan. Mm. Um, I just don't there aren't words to, to explain it I feel like I'm sat here looking for a word to say oh if they just do this no Tony Smith would have thought of it you'd think yeah yeah. they should have lost to London like, yeah I know we went in on them then London fatigue just saved them basically yeah and they probably realised how bad it was and everyone picks up your game after a really bad performance like that and they put in a decent shift at Catalan, and we praised them for that extra effort. This was as bad a performance as, the, Lon- as the London game. Well, this is it as bad just, a performance it, I've seen from any team this season. I just think this just was... Would you Would you argue that point? May, maybe is? Cass against Huddersfield the other week. Yeah. Cup it just for capitulation. I think yeah. this is the thing, though, isn't it? It's like, we're... It, to be honest, with, yes, it was a big game for both sides. Hull FC wanted to go and prove a point. It was a depleted Lee, but Lee wanted to get the first one in the season. So two points was massive for both clubs, don't get me wrong. But even if you're Hull, you've had the win against London, so you've got your two points. You have won a game so far this season, like Lee, before this game didn't. 
you've just put on a good shift against Cal. People are saying, right, there's something there you can build on. Mm. And it's just been all stripped back in the back to square one now yeah, exactly. in this performance. You're right. They're actually... Even if they would have lost, you know, they would have lost by two points in the last minute because yeah. someone knocks over a penalty goal. You could mm. say, you know what, lads, you win, you win as many of them as you lose in your career. Mm. That's true. But this one, no, they're just straight back to square one. Mm. Just they're that, that one, everything we did against Cattle that was good, wiped off. And it, We're back to square one. Yeah, the good feeling of winning against London. Yeah. yeah. Gotta be gone. There's nothing to build on. I, I, I think this is the worst performance of the season purely because. We expect those from Castleford a bit. Not against Lewisfield, yeah. maybe, but we expect those against Cass, and they capitulated at the end once the game was gone. Yeah, they, they had a head fall off. This was complete and utter domination from a side out. that should be competing with Lee. Yeah. They play Huddersfield in the cup, and then they have to go back to Hull KR. Yeah, it would be rival, right? Yeah, so rival, rival round. Like Hull KR, yeah. It doesn't get any. I'm, I know we joked about it with Cass and London that you can't back any of them. But they've got to play Hull KR, Huddersfield, Saints, Leeds, Warrington. So they play Huddersfield twice in a in, in a three weeks. three weeks, and those are the two games where you think they might, might be able to pick up some have a chance. No disrespect to these two clubs, but they've got London and Cass. And apart from that, and they play them, gonna, they play them in back to back weeks. Yeah, and but apart from that, what I'm saying is that LFC are going to find every other game except that. Mm. I think difficult. I mean, was having to check for. We started to record it pod- in July. Before we started to record it podcast, pardon me. Um, I cast going to give Hull FC a good game, and I think under the form they're in, you'd probably say, yeah, that's not going to be an easy win for well, Hull we, FC. Well, we, we asked you, didn't we? Who, who do you think would win on a random Friday night in Hollowell Jones with Liam Moore as the ref? Say, for example, Hull out or Cass? And I don't know the answer. You did sit there in silence for a minute. I don't know the answer. Yeah, no, you don't. <laughs> I don't think there is a, there is an answer. At a neutral venue with a new, you know with a neutral referee, big match feel. I don't know who'd win. No. Everywhere I else, I think right, Salford or Salford would beat them two teams. They'd beat Huddersfield, but they might lose to it. You know. Yeah. But you generally don't know them. Too, just do you? those he, two teams. They're just. He is. He is we should thing. be saying Hull FC would wipe the floor with them if based on how much they cost the squads. If you're a Hull FC fan or you're a Castleford fan, who do you think's feeling worse at the moment? Because I think the feeling worse is in, in the whole camp. I do, probably because they had so... Cast without trying to... They had a new coach come in. Everyone wasn't expecting Didn't really it. do that much in the signings, yeah. you know what I mean? They probably wasn't that much option. I read about how the pack was going to bully everyone with Franklin Pelle, Herman SES. Yeah, yeah that's it. There was a lot of talk before the new season. Brown, well, we can't wrap this section up without talking about Franklin Pelle getting banned again. The only player who's been banned this week... He's had more red cards than the Pelle. No, he didn't, have a, he didn't have a red card this time. But he he got a one-match suspension. I don't even know what he did. They should have suspended him for missing all them tackles in the middle of oh, the Oh, he did get he did get a um, red ca- uh, yellow card. He got yellow just card, before, he didn't say. Just before. Oh, yeah. remember, what, what did he do? He got a one-match ban, Phil. I think it was like a high uh, tackle. Oh, was it? I don't remember yeah, right. But he's the only one who's been banned. So, he's, so played, he's missing a couple of games. He's played two games and he's been banned twice. For four, for four games. So he's missing the game against... You know, we talk about that... starting good at a new club. Have a good start. Yeah. I think he's had exactly the opposite. He's not had a good start, has he? Good... Try and knock good. a bloke's head off after 27 minutes. Well, yeah. Um, right, shall we move over to Catalans? Yeah. Uh, Catalans played Castleford. It was 16-6 at half-time. Catalans ran away with it a little bit in the second half and got it out to 40 points to 14. But the same thing... I think this is the same thing what we said about Hull FC after the big... Uh, after their game against London the week after that they put in a more spirited performance and we were impressed with them. I was relatively impressed by Castleford. I thought they fought till the end. I thought they put effort in. This is a this is a, a bad point for Super League, this. Because we're talking about Castleford, or at least they tried, <laughs> away at Catalan, and they got beat by how many? 30 points? Uh, 26. 26. If Luton go to Etihad Stadium and lose 1 0, well, at least they put a shift in. If they go and lose 5 0, everyone talks about them throwing, giving up. And everyone talks about you can't just let City yeah. play. Yeah, this, this league is now in a position where the teams near the bottom go to one of the teams near the top, and it's just about staying within 30 points. It's not yeah. about causing an upset, it's not about coming within 6 or 10, it's about can you come within 30 points of them? Yeah. Mm. It's, not a, it's not competitive, is it? It's not a competitive 
league anymore. Top three, bottom three, and then the middle six, it feels like. There's competitive games. There's excellent games, like Leeds and Saints, an excellent game. We're going to Salford last week, Hull Care and Warrington, amazing game. But there's also absolute bloodbaths every single week. Yeah. And we've had two we just talked about, and we've not even talked about the third yet. Three absolute bloodbaths in a six-game weekend. I can't be. Yeah, no, half the games right, can't yeah. end up. Half half of the games can't end up like that. Lopsided, where the the winning team is miles streets ahead, and taking the queue off the rack after an hour because they all. I know, did. I know we spoke about this before. I know we have spoke about this before about it should be fourteen teams, and it should be fourteen. It should be sixteen. There's not the players. There's not the development of players. For if long, if, if yeah. enough teams invested in their academy, put the money where the mouth is and looked at long-term success, there is no reason that teams can't be successful or compete. Wigan, I, I, we say it every week, Wigan, Saints, Leeds produce the most players. Warrington have upped the game in producing players. Catalan have upped the game in producing players and are mm. getting the... That's why they're at the top. Mm. Hulk AR when I was seen at, some success from... When, when I was at school... A lot of the people that played rugby around me were talking about oh, Warrington are snapping up a lot of players, yeah. young players. Mm. Not a lot of them did get signed, but some of them did. And they were saying, well, who's pushing them up? Well, Warrington are signing the most players. Warrington went and signed... Someone told me they went and signed like an almost entire Crossfields team mm. that was a successful youth team. Yeah. They'll see the benefit of that. Yeah, and they will come. And they've kind of already a bit. Mm. They've got some good young players. They've there? started to bring players through, like Connor Wrench, Josh Theulis. Hayes. Hayes. Um, What's that forward call? Is Green, it uh, Leon Green, Green, is it? So Green. Yeah. Lucas, Lucas Green. Green is it? Yeah. The players that they've brought through that have played Super League. Mm. They need, obviously, they need more of that, but, and but that, they're but, getting there. But then good teams produce them players and then. Go and cherry pick the best players of everywhere else because they want to be at the top teams. Yeah. There's a reason, not to pick on Wakefield, they, they bring through Tom Johnston and then he ends up going to Catalan. Mm. They brought in Lewis Murphy. Lewis Murphy, Corey Hall. Oh, bring a couple. Didn't, Wakefield didn't bring Corey Hall through. He came through at Wigan and Leeds. I'm sorry, I'm wrong there. Yeah, Corey Hall was, was a Leeds product that we. Sort of stall. I and, about that. Um, did we take him at the same time as Morgan Smithies? Might have been around the same time. Might have been the but same time. We took two of them from Bjork. Do, do, there's a reason the ones that they do occasionally bring through end up leaving. Mm. You need to be bringing. I saw a thing today about what, what clubs have brought through the most players. William was second. Uh, sorry, we're going to play the mo- second most homegrown players. Just this year? Just this year. We've played 11. But if you if you include... Well, like if, if you wanted to include Joe Burgess and Oliver Gildart, and yeah. it, we're going to be top by a mile. Yeah. yeah. The only one who beat us was Hull FC, who've played 12 homegrown players. Yeah. Well, London must have played a lot as well. I, I can't remember where they were in the list, and I'll, I'll have a look for it in a second. Lee have only got one in the Royal Squad. Frankie Halton. And if Lee want to continue to be successful, they're gonna to have to put the money into that. I think they are doing. And but I but I remember like you mentioned about being school. I remember saying to you at six when we were must have been eight years ago, nine years ago, and Salford had started to build. Why are they not going to Wigan's Academy and every kid that doesn't get a contract with Wigan's reserves? Go and saying come and play at Salford. Mm. And building that squad up. Well, we they, they should have done that this year. We listened to Adrian Marley. He said something similar happened, mm. didn't it? Mm. They, Salford came around asking, "Did he want to play for them when he was younger?" Yeah, I just think it's the way forward. It's it's the fundamental thing. And if we want to get a league of fourteen, sixteen players, uh, fourteen, sixteen teams, more clubs need to be producing players. Yeah, because Wigan, Saints, Leeds, whoever are only going to have. They can't carry the burden for twelve teams, so they're not going to be able to carry it for fourteen or sixteen. Yeah. The the other option is because they, they can only have ten or eight. An age squad of twenty five players because they can't have too many themselves. I just 
get invested in your academies. It, yeah. Simple for me. It it really is. Um, Catalans seen the benefit of it. Uh, win forty four points to fourteen. Yeah, I think professional, professional professional job yeah. should win. Did win. Get the two points. Mm. Obviously, move on to the cup. This week, some nice touches from Morg again. Yeah, yeah. Team Morg. player in there. Yeah, he is a he's a good player. player. Interesting one. I just wanted to say before we move on to the the London Warrington game, Jack Broadbent played fullback for our Cass. Mm. Abdul peppered him a couple of times. <laughs> Great game to have your first one back. Well, Abdul but, peppers but, everybody, doesn't he? I actually looked at the thirteen. I saw him, and I didn't think too much at all. He must have had some injuries. But Hurley was on the bench, mm. so that was a really interesting. That's Craig Lingard tinkering a bit, do you think? Yeah, mate, yeah. mate. I, I really do like Jack Broadbent. I think he's a, yeah, he's a, a talented he's a, player. I like him. I like and him. And maybe he wants him involved in the game more. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see how that develops over the next couple of uh, couple of weeks. Right, let's go down to the capital. 58-4 to Warrington. Uh, Hakeem Aloudi with the try for London. Yeah. Um, I do like what they're doing with him. The, well, Ludi played. They, they, they he's know he's a nice a, try, yeah. They know he's a threat and, and giving him early ball to try and do things. They've not necessarily got the talent to beat sides, but get the ball in Ludi's hands and he can do things. Anyway, tries. One for Stefan Ratchford, a hat trick for Josh Thewlis, a hat trick for Matt Dufty. James Thewlis, he's on the BBC yeah. Sport website. Two for Adam Holroyd and one for James Harrison. Ratchford kicking nine from ten attempts, I think it was. Um, yeah. Big moment for Ratchford. Where he broke the record for mm. the longest kicking streak of 40, set by Reese Martin a few years ago. Mm. Um, and he broke the record by one and then immediately missed his next kick, <laughs> which is always how it seems to work. Yeah. I think Reese Martin broke the record by one and immediately missed his next kick as well. Or maybe he tied it, I can't remember. Mm. Um, the, wor- the worrying thing 56 missed tackles for London. That's more than one a set. Warrington only completed. 33 sets. Hmm. So it's nearly two missed tackles. Nearly two missed tackles every set. Um, They made nearly a thousand more metres than London. Obviously, it's a very, very big pack that London, uh, that Warrington carry. And Vaughan, did he get did he get a lot of metres again? Do you know? Uh, I know Matt Dufty made two (laughs) hundred and forty, but a lot of that would have been on that length of the field try. Well, Dufty made two hundred and forty from twenty two carries. Yeah. Um, and 100, 100 of them would have been on one Paul Vaughan made 212. That's ridiculous. In 20 carries. Yeah. Vaughan's numbers are always ridiculous. Considering he doesn't have a, a length of the field or like Dufty. Philbin made 99 metres, which is a bit harsh, round out to 100. Leon Hayes <laughs> made 103. Bullock hey, made 135. Good. That's good. Hayes making 100 metres. Connor Wrench made 99 for um, 10 carries. Mm, that's good as well. A good effort from the uh, centre. Adam Holroyd with two tries made uh, 54 metres. And just because it's Sam Powell, Wigan, born and bred, uh, just a, an easy 30 tackles, uh, <laughs> the most, for any Warrington player doing what he did at Wigan. Um, I, th- I thought they were good, Warrington. Yeah. yeah. It's hard to look too much into it because... Same as we said, it's hard to look into it. what we said, yes, London, but I thought they looked good. Mm. They, they put in an all right performance away at, at Catalan first game. I, I went and we both said... They were going to be good this year, Lewis. You you thought they were going to be even better than I thought they were going to be, but they start they've started well. Yeah. yeah, it's a it's a good situation that that Sam Burgess finds himself in. Um, at this point, yeah. I still think they need to go to the next level. Well, they need to. Uh, they, they need, need to, to sh- play one of the big boys and win, but they've not played one for it. It's not been first. It's it's not there and they put a decent effort in against Catalan. No. Um, They've got some big games coming up. Who have they got in the cup? I forgot who they got in the they've cup. They've got London again. They've got London in the cup. <sighs> so that's going to be another game for London. Might, might be another long afternoon for London. Yes. Um, but next week, Warrington have got... Cat- uh, the next Super League game, they've got Catalans at home. That's going to oh, be a big okay. test for them. So they played Catalan twice in six rounds. Well, this before is what I wanted to point out. they played Ozo Saints. Before they played Ozo Saints or Leeds. Well, oh, yes. they play Leeds the week after, then Lee. It's because it's rivals round. What, is, what do you mean Warrington. rivals? Room? Warrington's rival is Catalan. According to Super League. Okay, fine. Um, <laughs> but it's actually the same for, for Wigan where... Let me just check this right so I get it right. I don't want to we'll play say anything wrong. Too. We yeah, think. play Saints League. Then we play Cass again. Oh. Then we play... At home or away? At home. We oh. then play KR and Catalans and Huddersfield again. And Salford again before we played Warrington, 
before we played Hull FC, before we played Leeds. Why can't you just do half the season? <laughs> There's a reason. I don't know the reason. Every though. Premier League team plays the other 19 before they repeat, unless there's a postponement for something yeah. or the other. You can't play London. It, it just skews the league when you're looking at it midweek and you're going, well, they've played London three times, but we've not played them once. <laughs> How can you judge that? I, I just think it's completely no. unfair. Yeah. Um, right, so this was the fifth round of Super League, and if you followed us on Twitter, we've actually started to do um, what we've considered the power rankings. Mm. Uh, Matty, do you want to just give us an explanation of what the power rankings are for those that don't well, know? Well, yeah, it, it's it's an NFL thing, I think, that then came into the NRL and the AFL, and which is where I've sort of ca- captured it. Even though I do like the NFL, I don't I don't follow all the media around it. Whereas the NRL three hundred and sixty and the AFL three hundred and sixty, I like both of them shows. It's meant to be a ladder, uh, as they call it, or a league table of where you think teams are right now. That doesn't take into account who you've played and who you've not played. So what Tom was just talking about, the if you played London twice, you don't get quite as much credit as if you've beaten Saints. So the, the way it's supposed to work is it's a, a league table, like I said, of who would beat who at a given moment in a neutral venue So on any given day. Just to say, like, off we, off, we did this at the start of the season and Wigan were ranked number one after... Well, we just based final. it off our pre-season rankings from our pre-season yep. special, where we predicted the teams to finish. And then after one game, we shuffled a few around, and then we're, we're going to do it every month. Yeah. So we've seen now five games, roughly, of every team, yeah. uh, including the Penrith game. Uh, and we've seen four, four games from yeah. Lee, but you know, we'll make do with that. So we've seen five games from each team. Let's see where we're at. Who would beat who, do we think, in a game tomorrow? So it started off... Week one, I'll just fly through the order of week one. After week one, we said Wigan were top. Said second, Catalans third. Hull KR in fourth. Yeah. Leeds were in fifth and Warrington made the top six. We had Huddersfield, Lee, Salford and then Cass, Hull and London. And the reason Huddersfield went above Lee was because they beat them in round in, one. In week one. Yeah. So we would say, well, Huddersfield would beat Lee tomorrow because they just did. So the top three stayed the same. We still say that Wigan, Saints and Catalans are in the top three in that order. Yeah. Good Friday is, is the one that really needs to be considered. Yeah, I would say... Consider some I, movement. I, I would say Good Friday... Well, rival round, let's say. Rival round is a massive... We're going to say in Talons, you just said Catalan mm. and Warrington, is it, is, isn't it? Yeah. So th- those two teams are quite That could shuffle well. it about. Yeah, that will definitely yeah. shuffle it because these teams are now playing each other. Um, that was the top three. We then had Warrington move up to fourth. Yeah. Warrington have been the most impressive team since... Since they've week moved, one, yeah, they've they had a very moves. good effort against Catalans in week one, mm. and they beat Hull KR, um quite in a close, tough game, and, and and they went away and won, which has done Warrington a lot of credit. In fifth was Hull KR. They've obviously just swapped and gone down a place because of Warrington's movement. Yeah, but in six, we've got Salford. Uh, yeah, this I was think, a tough one. This was really tough, but we've got to give credit to the fact. That they beat Hull Care. Mm. They beat Saints. They beat Saints. They pushed Wigan very close. They were very good against Leeds in the first game and they beat Castleford. Um, they've been really impressive and it's hard to ignore the form that they're in. In seventh, we moved Lee up, uh, up to seventh due to no, the. We had Lee in eighth. Oh, sorry. Leeds. Leeds, Leeds in seventh, sorry, who've yeah. dropped out of the top six. Purely based off um, their results, losing to Saints, losing to Hulkar. We get that they had a good performance against Catalan and Lee. But they, they sort of rescued one against Lee, didn't they? Yeah. And the five minutes, the, they had a good win against Catalans, but we've took into consideration the fact that the first 40 minutes of of uh, the Lee game, they yeah. were very, very poor. Yeah. Lee have moved up to eighth. Um, Lee have stayed eighth. Yeah. Uh, stayed eighth, sorry. Yes, they lost to Huddersfield first game, but they've played some really, really tough games. Yeah. Losing right. to Saints, losing to Leeds, and then a very, very dominant win against Hull FC. If we were doing it last week, we might have dropped them, but we were impressed this week, so we've kept them at eighth. Yeah. That makes sense. We're not going to put them above Leeds or Salford, but we're in, keeping them. In ninth, Huddersfield, they've dropped down. Yes, they won the first game against Lee, 
they were very, very poor again, a 28-0 loss against the Saints. Mm. I was not impressed with them in the defeat against us, who were mm-hmm. fatigued, should we say, from mm-hmm. the Penrith game. They beat Castleford. We can't really take too, uh, too much of a look at the Castleford result. And then losing to Hull KR. They're probably in that section of teams where they'll beat all the bad teams and lose to all the good teams. Mm. Yeah. That's what I think they'll do. Yeah, I, I can't disagree. In there with Lee and... Yeah, I think that's where they'll, they'll be so far. Yeah, this is where we then had a little bit of a change. Um, Hull moved from 11th to 10th, purely based off the the London win. Um, this was really, really difficult, and we we actually sat in silence for about five minutes trying to work this out, <laughs> mainly based off the fact that, I don't, I don't know about you two, I would back Hull over Cass, purely because of the pack. I think the pack's a little bit more dominant, a bit bigger. Yeah, Bolin Mulster. Played with Texar, yeah. well yeah. there, and you've got a bit of quality. You could win him a tight game, mm. maybe. Cast dropped down to eleventh. For Cast to win that game, it'd have to be. You'd you'd feel you, the one game you could see them winning. Bad conditions. Mm. They get some fifty fifties. The ball bounces their way at Castleford. Yeah. Small mm. pitch. Do I, I, yeah, yeah. And then rounding up the the twelve was London. It would have been really interesting if London had beat Hull FC. How that would have affected the rankings? Yeah. Oh yeah, because they may have jumped <laughs> up. Um, I don't think so. The way the ship points the last two weeks, I think. Yeah, yeah. But that rounds off the power rankings. Just to summarise, it's Wigan Saints, Catalans, Wire make up the top four. KR and Salford sneak in at six. Leeds just miss out. Lee and Huddersfield are eighth and ninth, and the bottom three is Hull, Cass, London. It'd be really, uh, we'd really like you to get involved and. Gives you feedback. Who do you think would you would you change anything in that? Do you think anyone deserves to be higher? Would you or move up or down? Mm. Yeah. Mm. But what's the reason? Reasons why? Yeah, you have to give a reason. You have to tell us who you're moving down. Why? What changes you're making? You can't just say. Oh, should be high. Okay, I are too low. Send. Yeah, that's not good enough. Mm. I want. I want to know who's coming down in that rankings to. Uh, to allow that movement, um, but that wraps up Super League. Yeah, we'll be back really quick, uh, really shortly. So should I say? to uh, talk about probably the greatest match-winning try ever. See you shortly. Okay, so we're back. Now, before we talk about the uh, the predictions for the Challenge Cup, which is always fun to do, it's a little bit different, um, there's a few things we need to talk about in the NRL. Morgan Smithies ripping it up. Everyone's telling him to get him in his fantasy team, yeah. uh, in the fantasy teams for the NRL. Yeah, because uh, he just loves tackling. Makes tackles in his sleep. I saw one one guy said that he just made a, a calm forty tackles for them. Yeah, which is Morgan Smithies through and through. He's a he's a serious talent. We talked about it on when we when we jumped on that Australian show. Um, it depends on the type of player you wanted who was going to be the biggest success. But um, I forgot where I was going with that. I don't know either. Oh, Morgan Smithies. Uh, Morgan Smithies. <laughs> the, depends on the type of player that you wanted. You look at the camera side and it it's... It was screaming out for a Morgan Smithies. Yeah, they've got a lot of X-Factor players uh, in the forward line. Papali, uh, Tappany, uh, Big Hudson Red, Young. Hudson oh, Young, Hudson Elliot Young, Whitehead. Yeah, X-Factor. And if you wanted a an active player, it might just be a little bit too crazy. The fact that they've got a workhorse in there in Morgan's for these, he's playing 80 minutes, making tackles, doing the hard stuff, made another 100 metres. Um, I think the Raiders fans are going to love him. Yeah, they'll love him. I think, well, too, I think they already do. Tough as old boots. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, Tough as a $2 steak. Mm. Another guy that we should mention, Capius Paul, was promoted to the starting yeah. 13. He started left second row. Lost in um, golden point. Cowboys have got two wins now. Disappointing, but... Cowboys have got two wins. What else has happened? So the Raiders have got two wins. That was worth yeah. saying. Yeah. Um, what else has happened? The Panthers won. Panthers Penrith won. won the first game. Against the Eels. That was a good game. Can we talk about a certain try? We've, yeah. I suppose we've got to do it at some point. Haven't we? Mel- Melbourne are now two from two. Um, the Waz, who obviously played Melbourne, are, are, have lost two from two. Yeah. But what a try that is. Oh. <sighs> The Xavier, Xavier, the Xavier Courts match winning try. I, I felt bad for the Warriors because they yeah. fought so valiantly to get back yeah. into the game and to be leading. Mm. 
But what a try to win the game. That is unbelievable. He jumped from about five metres out. Jumped from five, six metres out, about six feet into the air. He's, and he's, he's defending against a very, very good winger defensively in um, Dallin. Uh, your mate Lionel. Lionel, oh, yeah. Lionel was defending. But very, very good defensively. There is absolutely nothing you can do when someone pulls that out to win a game. This is better than Blake, this is better than Blake Ferguson's. And yeah. Do, do you know why he's better than Blake Ferguson? Because Blake Ferguson was a forward pass and he got called back anyway and he'd already done a backflip. <laughs> this one, he didn't need a backflip because yeah. it wasn't a forward pass. He was given. I, I even like the work the centre did to get him into space. Yeah, Remus Smith does really, really well yeah. just to hold up but hold up the winger. Um, it's what probably... A try. What, what a, a try. try. Go and watch it. I, I've watched it 10, 15 times on repeat. repeat. yeah. Did you think for a second that he... Uh, <laughs> His hand had touched the ground. Because when I saw the I replay thinking, from the yeah. other side, I thought, oh, no, he's not ruined this, has he? It was close. Um, no, great I, finish. What else happened? Dom Young scored his first try of the season. He can move that kid. He he can go for the Roosters. Guy. Yeah, he's go for the Roosters. He Te- really Teddy's, Teddy's quick. Not so but, Dom. But he gets into space and normally he'd back himself, but... It Dom, just offloads, just, just sees Dom that's Young. That's good, because I really wanted Dom Young to do mm. well after his yeah. bit of making himself a stare at the Knights, and you think you know, sometimes some people move clubs and it doesn't work out for them, so I am glad. Yeah, and I was, I was worried after he picked that injury up early on. Injury. I, I'm, I mean, oh, I, for the first of many for Dom the Young. The thought of Dom Young, I've seen the way Dom Young plays and the way Herbie Farmworth plays, just gets me so excited as for England. Yeah. If mm. you can get England playing meaningful test matches, which is another point that we're not going to go into again, them two, Jake Wardle, oh, will be some some three quarter lining them up. The other side, Tom Johnston. Take your on the pick other on the other side, Tom Johnston, Tommy Marshall, Wilkinson, Marshall, Davis. Yeah, take your pick, Matty Ashton. Some take brilliant. your pick. That three quarter line is going to be absolutely immense. Throw Jack Wells being a, a full back for all, <laughs> and George Williams, and then jo- throw George Williams in for good measure and Harry Smith and the backs. That's a back seven that could beat anyone. We've always been. Decent in the forwards, England. Mm. And being able to hold our own, tough. Yeah, now we're decent in the backs. If them back seven play, that's a strong back seven. Mm. Yeah. Um, one game I do want to mention, the Finns. Oh, yeah, they won. Get the, the first Finns. win, the hammer. I uh, I was critical of him, <laughs> but he gets a hat-trick. He was great. He was fantastic. He was great. What, did he score a hat-trick? Yes, uh, scored a hat-trick, yeah. His yeah. last try was a bit soft, really. Yeah. But another video that's done the rounds. No one knows he's got to talk about it. <laughs> So it is not seeing this. Uh, <laughs> Benji's brother, uh, Marshall King, the yeah, nine father, King. the Dolphins, um, bravely charges down a kick that yeah. comes off. Whose boot is it? It comes off. Um, ben Hunt. Is it Ben Hunt? Was he playing ben the? Hunt. Was he playing the dragon? Yeah. Yeah, the dragon yeah, yeah, yeah. So it comes off Ben Hunt's boot. Who we know can kick a ball. <laughs> And he smacks it. You've got to remember, he sets it up for it one of the massive spirals. Oh, he's going. He's not He's not trying to chip over the top. <laughs> not it's not a chip and chase. It's a proper, I'm trying to get this as far as I can down field. He's about as close as we are now. It's point blank range. <laughs> and it smacks Marshall King straight in the chops. And he weren't seeing stars, he was seeing galaxies. <laughs> it was gone. And I mean, it was it's his eyes fact, in the back of his head. He fell to his knees and it's Hunt, the fact bless that him. Ben Hunt, like, ben he cuddles him. He cuddles him. He ben just goes, I'm Hunt. sorry, are you, are you there? Are you alive? I, I, like, have I killed you? Because it's just. He passed the HIA. It. Over here, Ben Hunt would have got 10 minutes for that. Direct oh, contact to the head. He <laughs> smacked There's no mitigation, and though. It just. <laughs> Hit him in face and he was gone and Ben Hunt just cuddled him. For Marshall King just made sure it was okay. there, his initial answers must have been terrible. To get back on and score. He scored, yeah. <laughs> yeah, fair play. But honestly, oh my I'll word. tell you what, he, he better not be suing the NRL in 40 years' time. <laughs> I, I can see it now already. Oh, goodness, that was such a silly moment of Sometimes rugby's just dead silly. Yeah, yeah. And that was a time getting. I do love that they call it the Falcon. The Falcon, yeah. It, it would have. It could have only been better if it had gone towards like. No, if they'd have scored the try line yeah, and they'd scored. They'd scored try. Oh, it would have been brilliant. Um, and the other games that we've not mentioned, sorry, I should say, obviously Canberra beat West Tigers. Yeah. Uh, Manly one twenty one points to fourteen. Um, yeah, Manly got two wins now. Two wins, yeah, looking, looking good. good. At the start, DCE yeah. and Luke Brooks is a real partnership. I said last yeah. week the league needs a strong Manly side. Yeah, Turbo, you're right Turbo and Burbo, they're really 
coming together. You said you didn't like Jay Paul and Burble. You said you didn't like Jay Paul and Burble. I can't stand it. I've heard it too many times. Um, you brought it up today. But here's one. Nico Hines. Is he the best looking man in rugby league? <laughs> what a question. We're not here to answer that question. The answer is yeah. <laughs> Just a mate. Oh, he's got the surfer long hair. He's got the surfer look. He is a good surfer, actually. He is a very good surfer. He's a good surfer. Uh, they beat the Bulldogs 25 points. Oh, he's good as Chad Townsend. He's an excellent surfer. Mm. 25 points. He's got, he's got the hair, though. Yeah. It's all in the hair. <laughs> I just love the fact he was sh- uh, bright pink shorts underneath his matte shorts. He's copying his idol, mm. David Fifita. Big Bopper. The big bopper. Have you seen the Big Bopper bat? Yeah, I've seen the Big Bopper. They snuck that in without telling anybody. That's that, really that good. Should have, that should have been advertised, that. No, no, this... they, it was snuck snuck in. They didn't want anyone to find out about the Big Bopper bar. Imagine if David Fita had been there pulling pints for it's the first just a game. David, it's just a David Fita. What's the Big Bopper bar? It's a David Fita-themed bar at uh, Bellevue, oh, at Wakefield. Oh, right, right, I, I, right. I like it, mate. It looks good. The they definitely bar. should have had Fafita on though serving pints. So imagine they just pull the the curtain down and David the uh, David Fafita to be fair seems like the type of dude who would serve pints in a pub <laughs> named after him. Well, I could see him doing that. He'd be up for the yeah. club. Yeah, right. Should we jump? He put he he's give a lot to that club, Annie. So yeah, he deserves it. He deserves and you know it. what? Deserves they love him. After him. They love him. He, he loves, loves the club. Them. Yeah, it's, it's a good point. Keep him involved as much as possible. Right. Should we talk about the Challenge Cup? Yeah. Start off with us first. Wigan vs Sheffield. Yeah, Sheffield Eagles. I don't think they've ever played Sheffield Eagles in my lifetime. I can't remember. Mm. Really can't remember. No. There should be a thing. To... We're always saying we want more teams in the league and more teams in, in the cup so we can play new teams that we never play again because mm. it feels like we play Salford 40 times and Hull Care 40 times a year. Mm. Good. Play Sheffield Eagles as a new team, new colours, new fans. Mm. I just wish it was in Sheffield. I'd love to go and... Yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, I'd like it. York away, Sheffield away. Mm. Maybe, maybe they could look into that when maybe they draw not. these games that if you get a championship side it's away we've done Featherston away haven't we when I was a bit young we did Featherston away um, the big fella stadium Batley away that'd be good you know what their stadium's called oh, I think you have told us this Fo- before Fox's Biscuit Stadium the Fox's Biscuit Stadium <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> right God, I think... stop with these sponsored names. <laughs> totally wicked stadium. The Mender Halls and Jungle. Mender Halls Jungle. They, uh... Not Wakefield got a silly one now as well. They've the Be Well Support. Be Well Support Be Stadium. Um, <coughs> but right, I thought it was still Rocket Mortgages. <laughs> <laughs> right. Should we. Um... Was it Rocket Mortgages who that rumour came out about Luke Gale and they had to fire him off at Leeds because he'd. He'd signed it. He's got a mortgage with someone other than Leeds was sponsored by a mortgage company. Leeds was sponsored by Leeds. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, and he got a mortgage with that. Bradford and Beagley or something. That wasn't Leeds (laughs) built in society. Oh, wow. That was a vicious rumour when Rugby League got (laughs) silly again. Oh, Rugby League just loves it. Right, Wigan Sheffield. I take it we're all back in. Yeah. Wigan. Yes. Um, Probably the the, the tie of the round here. Leeds Saints. Mm, Again. We need Saints again. Lewis, who are you going? Oh, uh, Saints again. Matty, who are you going? Hmm. See, we split our two games with Leeds last year. Is this one at Headingley again? It's at Headingley again. I can't. I'll have to go Saints. I'm going to go Leeds. Because yeah, I, I can just see... I always think one will win the Challenge Cup yeah. game and one will win the League game. So... And beforehand, I would have said one wins both. Um, Leeds will be really training for this after not fully having a good second half, I would mm. think. Uh, so I'm going to go Leeds. They've got to be tighter in the mid middle of the pitch, though, Leeds. Yeah. Letting those soft tries in through the middle. they have got really to cut that out if you're going to play against Saints. Yeah. Right. Hull KR Salford. I've heard a few Hull KR fans potentially talking about resting players oh, really? to focus oh. on the league. I heard some Salford fans might be saying the same thing. Mm, that could be a really interesting one. Who do we fancy? Salford's got a depleted fact, squad for resting players, really. Who, who, who would need to rest more players? If we're being honest. Salford definitely need to rest it more, in my opinion. Salford. Well, Salford have got more out, so mm. they might not be able to. I don't... I don't... Do you understand that? No. Clubs resting... No. Players in the cup no. to focus on the... Without trying to sound nasty, you're thinking the league's going to be down. contested by... A Wigan Saints, maybe Catalan sneaking mm. in there as your top three sides. I'd, I'd put Hull KR's chance for top four. I wouldn't put them near anywhere near a grand final. Do you know what I mean? It'd be like, go and have a good cup run. 
You, win, you I mean? win four games, you win the cup. That's what I mean. I thought they'd prioritise a cup one rather than so folks go, on the go and have a day out. It's not like that. Especially yeah. when you consider one of Leeds and Saints is definitely going to go out. Mm-hmm. One of Huddersfield Hull FC is definitely going to go out. And Lee have got a tricky tie against Featherstone. Oh, Halifax have, uh, Catalan have got to go to Halifax. Batley have got to play Cass. <laughs> You know what I mean? There could be a couple of upsets in there. <laughs> That's a ridiculous... Catalan, I've got to go to Halifax. What other sport would that have? <laughs> That's a ridiculous sentence. Oh, right. I'm going to make you pick now. Like Sheffield and Wigan, you can see that happening in lots of yeah. sports. But Catalans, as an entire nation, <laughs> the Catalans has got to go to Halifax. <laughs> oh, wow. That's <laughs> right. ridiculous. I'm, I'm going to make you pick now, lads. I'm going to go Hull right. KR to beat Salford. Lewis, are you going? Uh, I will go Hull KR as well. I'll go for Salford then. Oh, oh no, I'll be different. I don't want to all put the same again. Right. Lee versus Featherstone. Lee got injuries. Um, Featherstone, thinking that they should have come up into Super League last year, probably were the best side in the Championship. Will they they'll be hunting for a, for a scalp here? Featherstone off the field problems. Big, big off the field problems. Hmm. There's been a statement by the chairman today yeah. saying that they made a lot of the payments today. It would have been a real hammer blow if he'd uh, not said that today. How am I meant to carry on this? <laughs> a hammer blow. A hammer blow. A hammer blow. Mate, I, I'm going to go Lee. He's just upset he can't stand the hammer. <laughs> What's his favourite NRL player? <laughs> he sits in front of his mirror and does the shark celebration every time he scores. <laughs> Yeah, Lee. Lee. Okay, all just, three. Just with another hammer blow to better than this season. <laughs> <laughs> it's one episode. It's one episode where you can talk about Featherston and the hammer. <laughs> right. Battle of the coaches that could get sacked. Ian Watson. <laughs> That's a catchy title. <laughs> I'll come up with something better. I did that on the spot. Judgment Day. Um, Blame for your dinner. Your coaches <laughs> did it. Coaches for your dinner. <laughs> if this game is as poor as it could be, Ian Watson and Tony Smith might have to play like each other. Who would you back? I'd back Ian Watson if I was ears tucked in. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you going? Huddersfield Hull FC. Oh, um... Could home crowd advantage help Huddersfield? Is it at the, at the John Smith Stadium? Or? Oh, I, I, I don't know. I'm going to go Huddersfield to beat Hull FC. I'm going to be controversial. I'm going to go Hull. I wouldn't be surprised. I feel like they need yeah. a cup win to boost the form in the league, so I think they'll really prioritise I wouldn't be surprised this. if Hull win either. I'll go for Hull. Have a bit of a reset. It's a different competition. This is the kind of game they you win. You know what I mean? It's not about league form. doesn't matter in cup games. Let's just mm. get a win. and then they'll, fancy, they'll fancy it. They'll both teams will fancy us. it this week. Yeah. Both yeah. Te- when both fans, sets of fans will fancy it. So yeah, I'll go Hull FC. Now, Batley had a big win against Witness in the previous round. Mm. Yeah, they only uh, just lost to Featherston at the weekend. Yeah. Only just two point loss and they were winning. So playing very, very well. They're playing well. The uh, at Foxes home. Biscuit Stadium. <laughs> At the, fo- oh. at the Foxes Biscuits. <laughs> to Castleford. Craig Lingard. Better hope Castleford don't crumble. <laughs> <laughs> Some biscuit puns do you be like a hobnob and strong and sturdy? Or... Oh, I, can't even th- I can't even begin to think about the biscuit puns. But Craig Lingard, at one point he was head coach at Batley and assistant at Cass. Yeah. He's now become the full... That was weird again. Imagine coaching two teams at the same time. Uh, well, and with no shoes. With no shoes, yeah. Who are you going? Could Batley upset Super League Castleford? Could this be the upset? I'm going to back them. I'm going to go Batley. You're not going Batley? No, I'm not, I'll, I'll back Castleford. I think they just, they'll just have too much, I think. I'm going to go Castleford for the same reason I went on FC. Playing, I know it's a championship side to play in, but if they can get a win... Boost the mood around the place. They've got a cup win and try and carry that then forward into the league. I don't know. Maybe I'm hoping that into existence. No, I think I think it's hoping a, into existence. I think it's a fair for manifest it. Yeah. Right. Cool. So that's the challenge cup's all about, isn't it? Upsets. Two more games. <clears throat> Could we have an upset here? Warrington versus London. Um, no, no, Warrington. Oh, no. Next question. You think this is a good? I know it's a really good draw, but you can then rest three or four players. They'll rest a few players, but not too many. But but they managed to rest them the week before. And then they can rest another set of three or four. Because they know they've got London twice in a London row. London twice in a row. I think that gives London, uh, Warrington a really good. They knew, they the knew already that they had London. Yeah, they knew already that they had London. Especially yeah. with yeah. Catalan's leads and Leeds to come in the next three weeks. Yeah. Um, 
And Gregor Warrington. Yeah. Yeah, I think you got to. Yeah. Now, could there be an upset here? <laughs> the entire nation, Catalans, <laughs> uh, play Halifax at Halifax. I know we're joking, but that pitch could get ripped up, really muddy. No. Make conditions difficult for Catalans. Any chance? No. I mean, there's a chance. You've you got to think with all these games, there's a chance as an upset. But you're not going to predict it, are you? No. No. You'd be mad to predict Wigan to lose to Sheffield, although it, it has happened before and it could happen. Well, I'm, ju- I'm just looking, and it always tells me the odds. Halifax are currently 16-1. to 1, So the bookies don't see them pulling off an upset, though. Um, mm. I will go Catalans. You two the same? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I think this this provides a really tasty situation, really, that it's going to look quite good for the quarterfinals. If well, the big teams have been kept apart. Aside from Leeds and St. Helens, the big teams have kind of been kept mm. apart, haven't they? Which usually mm. doesn't happen. Yeah, usually we have Warrington at Warrington. Usually we have Warrington mm. and Leeds to our first two games in any order. Mm. and then we. I mean, when we won the Cup in um, 2022... We beat four Super League teams along the way. Mm. There was a possibility you could get to semi final without playing one. Yeah, possibly. I was just thinking, who do you think? Featherstone could get through. Batley at best chance of turning some. Turning Batley could chance. potentially yeah, get through. I think there's, there's options there. Featherstone are a chance, but I think Batley are a best, best chance of get, getting an upset. Definitely. Right. <clears throat> that wraps up this episode. Uh, Matty Lewis, thank you for joining uh, again nice this week. One. It's been no a problem. another week, another win. Um, yeah, I'll just keep winning. And let's, well, that's it, isn't it? Quite simple, just keep winning. Another mention for the wheelchair final thing, April yeah. the 6th. Get your tickets, if there's still some available. Get Wigan against Catalan. Get down and uh, watch what should be a really, really good game. Yeah. Uh, thank you for listening, and uh, we'll see you next week. See ya. Hi, I'm Tom, I'm Matty, and I'm Lewis. This is the Wigan Way, Wigan's favourite rugby league podcast.